I will broadly talk about uh, what Sir Dharabji Tata Trust has done so far on SRI. And since uh, this is kind of a conference of scientific minded people, we also try to do analysis of one of the project locations of ours, taking data for the last four years. So, and lastly, I will talk about what has been our line. I think I would like to skip this background thing because we know that 70 uh, percent of the GDP is contributed by agriculture and etc. But and also the, the fundamental thing here is that in terms of population growth rate, in, in proportion to that, the crop production is not increasing so much. Uh, we will have a situation in another 10-15 years where probably the food security scenario will not be as uh, secured as uh, we are today. And uh, also, I, we try to uh, see some kind of uh, productivity analysis of rice, where uh, it clearly indicates that uh, not much of uh, progress is happening in India, even though it is increasing, but probably it is not in proportion with the population increase and etc. And also, uh, the growth rate in rice yield is very fluctuating. Sometimes it goes up. To 19% of the previous year, then it goes, comes down. And it is mainly because of heavy dependence on uh, rainfall, because around more than 50% of the area under rice is coming under rainfall conditions. So the scenario is uh, not very uh, kind of uh, rosy. And uh, on the other hand, we know about 70% of the population of the country depends on agriculture. and. Uh, Rice has an important uh, role to play in the overall agriculture scenario in India. And about 7,000 crore of rupees is actually uh, earned by the nation uh, from the foreign exchange from rice only. And it is a uh, source of main livelihood for millions of in, uh, Indians. What is important is uh, the part capital availability of land, which is sharply declining it was 0.37 hectares in 1951 it has become 0.19 hectare in 2001 and it is projected to be 0.13 in 2021 so and similarly the per capita rice availability is also declining so our main challenge in front of us is to increase the productivity of rice that was uh, that was the finding when we first get Sandra Picata Trust and the Allied Trust together tried to put up a strategic plan for five years. And we decided that because of this kind of a scenario, we should concentrate on productivity enhancement for small and marginal farmers and should for ensuring food security at their household level. That was one of the main focus areas where we decided to work in 2007 and 8. And for intervening uh, from the point of now programming, we decided to work on, uh, on uh, SRI because by that time we had worked with two agencies, particularly in West Bengal and Sarkar, uh, namely Pradhan and Needs, where we had experimented SRI in uh, typical watershed project. And the field level information which we were getting was very encouraging. So in 2008, we decided that we should have uh, a specific program dedicated for SRI only. So that started in 2008 and 9 financial year, 7 and 8 uh, financial year actually. So we averaged at something like something 10.94 crore, which is equivalent to almost uh, 11 crore rupees for 3 years. And during that phase of the program, we reached out to around 66,000 small and marginal farmers in that given first phase of the program. And we reached 205 districts. And, uh, we also covered eight states. <coughs> and uh, based on some evaluation conducted by Dr. B. C. Bara, Dr. Sambhu Prasad, and uh, Dr. Divakar of uh, the Directorate of Rice Development, Patna, they did a detailed and evaluation of the phase one of the program and covered three states of Bihar. Odisha and Uttarakhand. So we decided that we shall go for the second phase. 
in 2009 and to, for 2009 and 12 for another three years we allocated 24 crore of rupees so it was the second phase uh, investment from server of the data trust why are the main activities were actually to in, uh, intensively engage with ngos and state governments for sri extension mm -hmm. so sri extension was one of the prime movers in that second phase of the program and we also gave lots of emphasis on human resource development we thought that unless the Russian level people are trained because um, SRI is more of a knowledge based intervention rather than, rather than technological intervention. And also we supported in providing uh, the implements which uh, you were talking about, withers and markers in particular. For example, in our extension model we have provided one wither for 10 farmers. So 10 farmers can hire one wither and they can actually rotate among themselves. And we also get uh, importance on research and advocacy also we do not do much on this particular field except for having one collaborative research project with BCKB, the Ransom BC Research in West Bengal. And we also promoted uh, innovation in terms of uh, you know, experimenting the same kind of principles with other crops and etc. And also exchange program. So this particular program has been reviewed about uh, six, seven months back by another set of people, so five, five member team. And uh, I will come uh, um, about the results of that particular evaluation. So our program has been uh, spread into multiple states. In each state, there has been a novel agency. This novel agency will coordinate with very uh, small organizations. For example, in Chhattisgarh, Pradhan has been our model agency. And Pradhan in turn in terms worked with another 15 or 18 organizations, including Karamdax, which uh, you were mentioning. So, for example, in Chhattisgarh, we have, um, in Jharkhand, we have the Society for Promotion of Western Development, in Uttarakhand, uh, People Science Institute. So, the model agencies play very important role in terms of providing training and also keeping uh, the information flow because we have given a robust MIA system which we developed along with our partners. And we always try to reach to the last marginal farmer because in the beginning itself we decided that we should be working with small and marginal farmers, particularly in rain pack conditions. And uh, on research we try to collaborate with uh, State uh, agriculture universities. So the uh, second phase of the program review, uh, the, uh, which has happened about six seven months back. So we have reached to about one point five lakhs farmers, covering around uh, thirty eight acres in Kari and thirty eight thousand acres in Kari, seventy thousand acres in Ravi, because. Particularly in Uttarakhand and the Bihar, many farmers, around 30,000 farmers, adopted uh, SWY, which is application of the same principle in wheat. So, from our uh, this database, we found out that 46% <coughs> increase has been observed, and in terms of income, 191% increase has been observed. And average uh, SRI coverage per farmer has been 0 0.35 acres. It actually, we have achieved this much only after fourth year. So, if one calculates 46 percent incremental yield, then it provides to a family 84 days of additional food security. So, if you if somebody uh, actually calculates this additional yield in terms of monetary value, uh, putting just an normal value of say 10, 10 rupees. Uh, per kilo, which is doorstep price. Then, in 2011, the out outcome was equivalent to around 34 crore rupees. So this is the outreach. Uh, in 2006 uh, and 7, we were working with uh, all few farmers, and we reached to around 100, uh, 1.55 lakhs in 2010. In terms of uh, coverage in states, 
our maximum coverage has been in Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Bihar, Uttarakhand, and Bhutan. In other states, we actually all the states did not start SRI in the same uh, time. So we started with uh, seven states in the beginning, then gradually we spread to, I think the new added states were Assam, Manipur, Maharashtra, so, uh, and also Uttar Pradesh was the last edition. So these are the distribution of the parlors of uh, where we have reached. So we also tried as a right principle as I was telling in other crops. That has happened mostly in Uttarakhand, Bihar. We also tried with sugarcane uh, in Bihar and other vegetables like pulses and oil seeds. Again this has happened in Uttarakhand and Bihar. Now we try to study about one particular project in Nayagar district of Urissa where the SRI adaptation has started from the first year itself. So this is the basic uh, background of the area and the population is mixed. They are, it will be mostly dominated by the other backward communities followed by cellular caste communities and some tribal populations. So these are the outreach uh, in terms of number of uh, SRI adapters and also in terms of uh, number of villages covered in the, those four blocks. So what is interesting here is the area which a particular household has put under SRI. So it, in 2008 it was 0 0.65 acres and it increased marginally actually in uh, five years time up to one acre. So I would say this is not a kind of significant uh, yeah. achievement. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, in terms of, yeah, if you, if you can also see from the point of view that they are actually small and marginal farmers, their land size overall is not so big. From that point of view, yes, but I think in five years time horizon, Probably one would have expected that 90% of the land will be put under SRI. Natural. So we, we actually try to analyze what are the factors they consider while adopting SRI. I will come later on. So this is the same uh, trend. So we try to uh, compare the uh, crop performance in conventional method as well as SRI method. And we observe that. Uh, Differences in uh, average plant height, average number of pillars, and average number of productive pillars, which is quite significantly high, 125 percent. And grain productivity has been uh, much uh, high in SRI, 86, 86 percent more than the conventional method. And straw productivity has been slightly more than. So details of this has been given in uh, highlight number 44. So I am just uh, giving the summary of our finding in terms of cost benefit ratio. In conventional methods it has been 1.27 and SRI it has been 2.52. Uh, so among, uh, we actually try to uh, see uh, different practices within SRI and what is the percentage of farmers following their particular practice? So, uh, transplanting after within 8 to 12 days of the sibling age has been done. Uh, first year it has been quite significantly low. Second year it has been almost the same. <coughs> and third year the SRI adopters, more than 50% of the SRI adopters have done transplanting of sibling of age between 8 to 12. Again, it depends, depended mostly on rainfall because all this area is rain, uh, under rainfall condition. Spacing 25 centimeter into 25 centimeter has been maintained almost by around 80 percent of the farmers for, uh, for the three years. One plant per hill has been, uh, the adaptation of that particular principle has been also increasing. 
because in the first year it was around 33 percent for my therapy in that particular principle and it has gone up to around 87 percent in the current year. Similarly, uh, organic nutrition uh, has been uh, increasing and integrated nutrition is mix, mixer of chemical fertilizer and organic. And uh, about 50 percent of the farmers have gone for weeding two times during the <coughs> crop period. Three to four times weeding has been done by another 50 percent. Alternative wetting and drying has been practiced by about 50 percent of the farmers. This is again because of the dependence on rainfall and etc. This has not been probably adopted by most of the farmers. So we try to also understand what is their perception about why they adopt, what are the reasons for their uh, continuing with SRI practice after three after three years or into the fourth, fifth, fifth year. So for this actually we have a Detailed MIS system where we have to think about many things and this comes under that MIS. So about 20 percent of the farmers felt that easy crop cutting, uh, crop cutting in SRI is the reason why they went for SRI adaptation or continue for SRI practice. Less seed requirement has been uh, given reason by maximum number of farmers which is more than 60 percent of the farmers and less water requirement has been cited by around one third of the SRI adopters. More grain and straw production has been cited by around 35 percent the farmers. Less chemical fertilizer and pesticide management has been cited by more than 40 percent. And higher cost benefit ratio has been cited by, which is almost the same kind of question here with uh, more grain and straw by about 20 percent of the farmers. We also felt that uh, our data base says that about 5% five five, five farmers only this adopted and they dropped out from SRI because the, we also tracked all the all farmers in the MIS database. So, and I will say among many NGO partners, I think this is one where our this adoption rate, rate has been very low. In other places, it will be higher than this particular place because the uh, particular partner NGO called Brickho Jibor Bandhu Parishad. They are very local based, strong organization. They are the first organization in Odisha, not only in Odisha, probably, probably in, in, in the India, which uh, promoted this so-called uh, self-initiated forest protection groups. So, and it is a very uh, old 25-30 years old organization. So they are outreach and they are uh, repo with the co local community is very, very strong. So that could be one of the reasons why here the dissolution rate, rate is low, low. So they have provided very strong hand rolling support to the farmers. And in almost all SRI uh, programs in all the locations, even though we have not uh, kind of uh, make it compulsory for everybody, uh, we have given some kind of flexibility to the NGOs about what kind of extension mechanism they will adopt. But in most of the places, the typical extension, extension mechanism has been that they will have uh, village resource persons yes, who will take care of 50 to 70 percent, uh, 50 to 70 farmers. They will go and train them in SRI and etc. <laughs> On top of that, that there will be uh, skill extension worker. About four, five to six VRPs uh, will work under him. And on top of that, there will be one SMS specialist <coughs> and three to four, three to four uh, skilled extension workers will work under him. So we adopted that particular extension mechanism. That could be another reason why uh, the adoption has been very strong. The reason for this adoption has been uh, delayed rainfall because many farmers keep the field ready and seedlings are ready, but the rain does not come. And in particular time. Uh, the skill levels are not available. Difficulty in getting implements. This has been improved over a uh, period of time because of the KGBK's intervention and etc. And small piece of land because in the beginning if you are putting only 0.1 acre of land for example, then your uh, outcome or incremental yield does not actually 
match with your expectation level. It doesn't make much difference. Even if say, you get say, 20, 20 days of additional food security in a calendar, <coughs> calendar year one, that does not probably inspire the farmer to continue for second year and third year because that is not enough incentive for him. <coughs> so I think one of the uh, learnings for us has been how much land is going to be put under the sun in the beginning of the year. So that has been, uh, that is thing with a uh, small piece of land. And sometimes when the extension workers go, they create some kind of height, some kind of high expectation level. They say that your in yield increase will be more than three times, four times, Sarguna Bajaga, Pajguna Bajaga, Pajaraikaro. So when actually it doesn't happen, it goes. <coughs> so that kind of expectation level creation in the beginning also creates some kind of discouragement. That's all. So we. Uh, in the second phase, during the second phase, we have provided like 24 crores of rupees support to the NGOs. Nabar also was supplemented by providing 24 crores, basically matching the same amount. And they also took the same route as SBDT. And uh, now, for the third phase of the program, we are providing additional 43 crores from the data trust. And we are going to reach out to uh, 2.5 lakhs new farmers. And plus, we shall continue with the existing farmers. It will be around 4 lakh farmers. And there has been, uh, we, uh, we are thinking that only, you know, incremental yield uh, calculation and thereby calculating how much additional food security they should be provided and etc. In spite of that, we shall try to look into the overall well being of the economy. So, there will be more integrated kind of approach now. So, we are going to reduce the number of states from 11 to 6 in the uh, new phase of the program. And we, because we uh, learned that in the process, until the established research institutes in India <coughs> don't recommend and accept that SRI is a kind of good practice or it should be done with certain conditions and etc. The upscaling model has been, upscaling has been a big challenge. So we are going to give lots of importance on uh, being research with uh, in SRI, particularly with uh, established uh, research institutes like ICR and ICR affiliated. Thank you.